again, it's Donna, your homegrown gourmet, part of the Gourmet Are Good Enough team, along with my sister Diane. And today, I'm here with my cousin Colleen. Hi, Colleen. Hi. How are you doing today? I'm real good. Thanks for having me. I invited you over because I wanted to talk about a good gluten-free dessert. And you told me you had one. So let me ask you a question. Why gluten-free? A lot of people have what's called celiac disease, so gluten-free, uh, they have to have that for their diet. There are people who are gluten or wheat intolerant, and there are some people who just don't eat gluten. And where do you find gluten? It is a protein that's in wheat, rye, and barley. Are we going to lose flavor because we're going gluten-free oh, today? Not at all. Not okay. at all. And what are we making? We're going to make an apple crisp. Okay, so to get started, Colleen, I have my oven preheating, and I think you told me 375? Correct, 375. Okay, great, 375. We're making two, because Colleen's going to go home with hers, but I want one for my husband. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my husband's favorite desserts. So, okay, so works. you brought this really fun contraption, and I can't wait to see you use it. All right, so um, we've washed up all of our apples. Yes. And mm -hmm. so we've got these nice big apples, and this is an apple peeler pourer. Basically, you just kind of hold on to this thing, you. yeah, and you turn it, and one part of the blade takes the apple <laughs> peel off, the other part takes the core out. Oh, wow. And you end up with these nice slices, and there you go. We've got uh, your apple all peeled and ready to go. And then this I can just throw in my compost. Oh, heck yeah. All right, this great. This is uh, good stuff to be compost. Okay, well, uh, now I know what I want on my Christmas list. In yes. the meantime, we're going to go ahead and finish this up, and maybe Colleen will let me try one, and we'll go on to the next step. There we go. Hey, hold it down. Okay. I'm one of those people, if if there's um, a new piece of equipment mm -hmm. and you want to check to make sure it's user-friendly, yeah, then hire me. Hire you. Because I will find the flaw. <laughs> no. It's guaranteed. Well, I will find the piece that's the most vulnerable, right? And I will break it. Yeah. That's it. Okay. So we're on to step two, and thank you, Colleen, for showing me that fabulous little tool. Because I'll tell you what, I'm gonna say it again. I want that on my Christmas list. Okay. What? So now that we've got our apples all cut up and in our dish, we're going to add our sugar and cinnamon. We're going to be adding some um, craisins, fried cranberries. We're also going to add a little bit of lemon juice. Couple of tablespoons of lemon juice. All right. And we've got uh, two tablespoons of sugar and about maybe a half a tablespoon of um, cinnamon. Mix that up just to get that all coated on everything nicely. I like the fact that we're doing this in the pan because that just makes One cleanup. Less bowl wash. Yeah. I'm all for less dishes. Very good. Cool. And we really filled this up too. That's yes. great. Yes. Well, apples cook down a little and bit. And then you're going to add your dried fruit. I'm putting in dates. I like dates. And also because I don't have any craisins. Any kind of dried fruit, I would imagine. This might be good with apricots. Now, you said we could make this dessert with different fruits. Certainly. Um, in the springtime, when blueberries are on sale, uh, early summer, I've done blueberries, which tastes absolutely wonderful. Um, I've done peaches, which are very, very good. And I add a little ginger with peaches. Apples are done. Yeah. And now we're going to work on the topping. Correct? Correct. Okay, now do we need a bowl for that? We do need a bowl. All so, right, walk me through the topping that. is very simple. We've got a cup of oats. I've got gluten-free rolled oats. Not all oats are gluten-free? Not all oats are gluten-free. Oats are listed I as... I did not know that. Well, here's the reason why. Oats are listed as gluten-free because there is no gluten in them, but when they're processed um, in a plant where there is wheat products, so say if you buy the Quaker oats and they make all kinds of cereal which contains wheat, they're cross-contaminated. So you need to get specifically gluten-free if you're truly trying to stay true to that recipe and, and well, save your diet. That. No Appreciate problem. That. So we're going to do our oats. We are going to do our flour, which we've added our cinnamon to. You're using a gluten-free flour, yep. and I'm using almond, almond flour, flour because which that's gluten-free. Gluten okay. So we're going to do that. We've got some chopped pecans, kind of coarsely chopped pecans. One cup. Okay. Half a cup of brown packed brown sugar. So far, this is pretty darn easy. It's very easy. Okay, now I see some melted butter here. What do I do with so that? So we've got one stick plus two tablespoons of melted butter. Okay. And we are going to add that. So I noticed uh, there's no salt, so this is salted butter. It correct? is salted butter. Okay. Just make sure you incorporate all of your dry ingredients so they're just wet with melted butter. 
I think I'm going to try this in the summertime. I'm going to do peaches and blueberries. Oh, definitely. Okay, mine is mixed. So just crumble that all in and around your apples. Wow. All the way to the edge. There's a lot here. There is. But just think about those wonderful pecans once they've been baked in the oven and all that wonderful brown sugar melting and down through there with the butter. And it's going to taste amazing. Okay, so Colleen, I was thinking about what to serve this with, and you had said it's great with ice cream. I don't necessarily know if all ice creams are gluten-free. They are not. Today, I'm going to whip together a little bit of uh, whipped cream. So there we go. So do I have to worry about dripping? I have not had any problems with dripping with all this. Right, all right. <laughs> In the oven they go. 375. We're going to set the timer for 30 minutes. All right, so it's been 35 minutes and we've pulled our apple crisps out of the oven. Mm -hmm. They smell great. Uh, this is perfect as is, but I'm gonna take it one step further today and I'm gonna make a little bit of whipped cream. I promised you whipped cream. And all I do is I take some whipping cream and just the slightest amount of powdered sugar for sweetness and then maybe a drop of vanilla. That's all we need. I only have about a third of a cup here, so I don't need more than that. This is going to be done in about 30 seconds. Okay, that was easy. Let's serve it up. You do need that much cinnamon. Yeah, you do. And you can taste the sweet apples, you can taste the tart apples. I like that crunch. Mm -hmm. the pecans. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and the pecans get a little toasty, so they. This is really hard not to do. Thank you so much, Colleen, for being here with me today. I really appreciate it. Enjoy. Ciao.